Ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your seats? The award ceremony will be starting shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your seats? The award ceremony will be starting shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Chief Executive of the Learning and Performance Institute, Edmund Monk. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Learning Awards at the fabulous Dorchester Hotel. Is that at the end of every paragraph? So tonight, as well as everyone in the room, I would also like to welcome for the first time the thousands of people from around the world that have registered to watch the live stream. Your families, yeah, absolutely. Your friends, colleagues could be watching this, so turn around to the camera at the back of the room, and you can give them a wave. Okay, and now, and now settle down. So we are here tonight to celebrate the 22nd Learning Awards, showcasing your outstanding achievement, best practice, and excellence in learning. Tonight, we congratulate every one of the finalists who've been selected from a highly competitive pool of entries from across the globe. These individuals and organizations recognized here are inspirations to us all, and they deserve the fullest praise for their achievements. So first of all, we would like to set you a challenge. We'd like you to tweet your Learning Awards photos using the hashtag Learning Awards, and the best picture from tonight will receive a bottle of champagne from the LPI. Oh, well, I knew you would do it, Paul. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing an unprecedented, revolutionary period of change in the way the L&D profession operates. For many years, the L&D has been exclusively associated with the delivery of training, but with incredible advances in technology and the now critical role of digital learning, the landscape has evolved beyond measure. We're transforming from a mentality of events and testing to an altruistic, performance-focused philosophy centered around the economic imperative of lifelong learning. And I am delighted I got through that sentence. <laughs> In doing so, we represent as a profession a unique opportunity to truly facilitate commercial success and change lives. The most successful organizations are already adapting and expanding their focus from formal training transactions to becoming enablers of measurable learning and performance improvement. They're providing learners with digital resources, communities of practice, just-in-time performance support, and much more, all offered across multiple learning modalities. They are responding directly to the demand for information whenever and wherever it is needed. Critically, they are creating genuine behavioral change. As you may have read in recent research from Josh Burson, organizations that have a strong culture of learning and development are now the premium places to work, more desirable to employees than those offering a high salary. Very different to when I was starting out. Learning is now the collective responsibility of the entire organization, and learning leaders are galvanizing their employees to build long-term careers that benefit not only the entire company, but the individual employee themselves. So where will 2018 take us? Well, we are now witnessing the very real adoption of AI, big data, virtual reality, within learning. And embracing such technology will be key to maintaining our role as the engineers of positive change within the workforce. L&D professionals will incorporate new media, resources, collaboration, and performance support in their solutions. Leading learning providers will further establish themselves as genuinely trusted partners, providing guidance, bespoke solutions, and building strong relationships. The LPI is witnessing new roles arising from the demand for human imagination and creativity as key skills in creating user experience and value. In these times of dramatic change for our industry, the need to reflect upon achievement and celebrate success is of paramount importance. The Learning Awards exists to recognize the most talented innovators in L&D and the unquestionable business performance improvements that arise from their hard work. We are continuously adapting the awards to reflect this 
by adding new categories. And at the LPI, we're passionate about the importance of people in learning. And that's why we celebrate individuals and organizations. I am proud and delighted to announce that for the first time ever, we will recognize individuals who are starting their journey by introducing the Rising Star of the Year Award. Thank you. Now, the standard of entries for the 2018 Learning Awards has been exceptional, both in terms of quantity and quality, with entries from a staggering 42 countries. In light of this, the independent judging panels would like it known that they have been incredibly impressed with the vision and depth of the learning solutions they have seen. As tonight's achievements demonstrate, ladies and gentlemen, opportunities abound for us all to forge a bright future for the organizations we represent. And as learning professionals, I sincerely believe that our time is now. On behalf of everyone at the LPI, I would like to wish all shortlisted candidates the very best of luck. So without further ado, let's get the evening started with our annual charity auction. We have raised almost half a million pounds for our nominated charities over the years, and this year we are delighted that once again our nominated charity is Dream Flight. And to tell you more about the charity, I'm honored and privileged to welcome the founder of Dream Flight, the truly inspirational Pat Pierce, MBE. Thank you very much, Ed. I'm extremely honoured and very grateful that Learning and Performance Institutes has once again chosen Dream Flight as your charity on this your special awards night. Dream Flight has now been going for 31 years. Behind me, you will see a little film showing you what the trip is about. Saves you having to look at me, doesn't it? <laughs> Every October, we charter a 747 aircraft and take 192 children with a serious illness or disability to Orlando in Florida for a 10-day action-packed and fun-filled holiday. And we don't take any parents with us, but we do take a huge team of volunteer doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, and other helpers to look after the children. The country is split into 12 areas around the UK. Sorry about that. So we become local in all those areas, but then when you add all 12 areas together, we then become a national charity. And we've now taken over 5,800 children. Initially, I just thought it would be a great idea to give these special children a fantastic holiday. But it has proved so much more than that. Nearly all of them come back with more confidence and realize they can achieve in life. They learn more from each other than they do from us adults. And if you put 192 children all on one aircraft and there is something wrong with every single one, there is no odd one out. Amongst our past children, we now have Paralympic gold medalists. We now have amassed a total of 37 Paralympic medals. Two young men have turned into professional golfers one child came back as a doctor, and one as a cameraman. These are just a few of their achievements. For the adults, it's not just about going on the trip and looking after the children, but it is the support we need all year round, be it fundraising or just spreading the word. I believe that every penny should be spent on the children and not on fancy advertisements and huge numbers of staff. And Dreamflight employs just three full-time and three part-time staff, and everybody else is a volunteer. We need to raise in the region of three quarters of a million pounds for each trip. So that's about 3,500 pounds per child. The charter of the airplane, 235 hotel rooms per night for 10 nights, 12 buses to ferry us around, enters the parks, and you feed 420 people three meals a day. You get quite a big catering bill. And this is where I need your help. 
Would you be kind enough to go out and tell all your friends, family and colleagues about us and spread the word about Dream Flight? You never know. They may be looking for a charity to sponsor or to even just do a small coffee morning for us. I know it sounds a lot of money to raise, but if everyone donated a small amount, these small amounts add up to the big amount needed at the end of the day. There is a saying, a dream we dream alone remains a dream. A dream you share with others becomes reality. And now I'd like to take one more minute of your time, if you don't mind, and tell you about our latest venture. We have just launched Beyond Dream Flight. I'm well aware that we give these children a dream holiday, but I don't want them to feel that we've just deserted them when we hand them back to their parents at the end of the holiday. I want to be there for them to help them achieve their aims in life. That's if they want our help. One young girl wants to train for the Paralympics in bike riding, and these special bikes cost £3,000. She and her parents have been raising the money and had raised 2000 and we've just been able to give her the final thousand so to enable her to start her training. And on the trip the year before last, one young boy in a wheelchair, he wanted to be an actor. His friend wanted to be a production assistant, and the third boy, who is blind, wanted to be a cameraman. And we were able to make this happen. So it does not always have to cost money. But that with our networking and our contacts, we may be able to put the children in touch with someone who can give them some advice and help. Thank you so much for supporting us tonight by helping to give these special children their dream holiday and hopefully a life-changing experience. But thank you also for keeping my personal dream alive. It means a lot to me and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Enjoy your evening and congratulations to all of tonight's winners. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Right, let me explain how you can donate. Let's get straight to it. There are two ways we're going to raise money tonight. You can either pledge online, or if you would like a chance to win a holiday to Rome, you can put your name on a £20 note and put it in the envelope on your table now. Obviously, write your name on it. That's the important bit. Now, some of us in this room have already been working on raising money for Dream Flight, and some of you that were here last year will know what's about to follow. So to help take us through this part of the evening, would you please welcome to the stage the Director of Sales and Marketing at the LPI, Kelly Davis. Evening, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Ready? Following last year's success with our very first LPI calendar, we have once again sought the help of key industry figures who have sacrificed not only their time, but in some cases, their dignity. Um, last year's theme was film posters. And for the 2018 calendar, we are excited to reveal to you 13 incredible versions of famous album covers. So tonight we want to thank those people who helped us create the calendar as well as embarrass them. So those of you who are included in the now famous LPI calendar, would you please stand up? And let's give them a huge round of applause. Thank you, everyone. You can sit down now, Paul. <laughs> so now the moment you've been waiting for, let's show each of these <laughs> pictures, showing the people as you've never seen them before. Kelly. OK. Behind me, you can see the calendar cover shot, which is Wings Band on the Run, featuring Etty McCormack, Ruth Dolan, Giles Hearn, Pauline Saunders, Kate Davis, Sarah Frame, and Izzy Nancaro. January 
is ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they get better. They actually get better. Martin Hill of Commvault, Greg Pearson of Microsoft, Paul Clegg of Pluralsight, and Kelly Hamlet of the LPI. Okay. February. Beyonce featuring Emma Henry and Samantha Kinstry of the Inform team and Lisa Johnson of Bernardo's. March, E17, <laughs> featuring Cully Powell, Stuart Martin, Giles Smith from QA, and Daniel Wing from Infinity. Okay, April, Fleetwood Mac, featuring Toby Roberts of Safety Media and Lisa Hambly Burns of the LPI. This, this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is... May. Uh, if anybody can name these people. This, this is, of course, Mike Hobbs of Pearson View, John Buttress, Steve Webster, and Julian Reich of Pluralsight. Okay, brace yourself, ladies. June, Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball. <laughs> Featuring Mark Zauer Sanders of Filtered and Mark Pillbeam of the LPI. It's an image that will be indelibly imprinted on your mind for a few weeks. Now's probably a good time to remind you that this, this is for charity, okay? So July, Blondie featuring Y Bin Lai of TTS, Henry Stewart of Happy, Ben Laycock of Filtered, and Emily Hall of QA, along with Brant Seathaller of A New Spring, and Leon Boland. August. Queen, <laughs> featuring Don Taylor of the LPI, Nigel Payne, Colin Steed of Learning Now TV, and Tony Small. Some of them are amusing and some, some of them are haunting, actually. <laughs> so. September. <laughs> the Spice Girls. Featuring Kathy Busani of Happy, Denise Lawson of Plural Sight, Claire Lickman of Happy, Sabina Babato of Happy, and Charlene McHenry of New Horizons. Okay, October, The Smiths, featuring Paul Freeman of Global Knowledge, Charles Gould, Colin Steed, and our very own Morrissey, Edmund Monk. And heaven knows I'm miserable now. <laughs> November. <laughs> Kylie, now, let's go through those dances. <laughs> Kira Gamble. Natasha Yeager of Splint. <laughs> Ollie Browning of QA. Ron Edwards, Sue Richardson of Your Impact. And I'm sure you won't be able to get this one out of your head. Well done. <laughs> okay, and finally, December, train spotting, featuring Donald Clark of Wildfire, Janet Garcia of PSI Services, Ron Edwards and Rob Hubbard of Learning Age Solutions, Craig Hamill of Zonal. Uh, yes, that really is Donald Clark on the left. <laughs> So finally, we just want to say a huge thanks to Lisa Hamley Burns, Giles and Colin for the photography, artwork and filming, respectively. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the Grange Hotels for allowing us the use of their facilities for the photo shoot. And a um, huge... 
Sorry, go ahead, Kelly. And a huge thank you to Stuart Martin and our friends at QA for funding all the printing costs of the calendars. Thank you. So we have already raised thousands more for Dreamflight, but do contact us if you would like to receive a copy of this strictly limited edition <laughs> calendar or a JPEG of any of those images. If you would like to be considered for the 2019 calendar, please do contact the LPI directly. I, I, doubt, that, I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> On behalf of everyone at the LPI, we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly. And I think it's worth pointing out at this point as well that the person who coordinated that entire project was, in fact, Kelly Davis. So thank you, Kelly. So now it truly is time for what you've all been waiting for, the official Learning Awards ceremony.
Absolutely fantastic. Right, I'm delighted to say that our host for the evening is someone we have all been very excited to meet. She has hosted countless TV shows and won numerous awards herself. She is the reason why my family rush home on a Saturday evening to make sure we don't miss Strictly, a show she has hosted for an incredible 14 series. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fantastically talented Tess Daly. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello in the back. Isn't this a beautiful room? Oh, I'm having the most brilliant night already, Ed. Thank you very much. The calendar alone was just worth turning up for that. I mean, brilliant. Play your cards right, Ed, and you and I are recreating the wrecking ball scene later in the after party. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I would like to welcome, send a very warm welcome um, to the Learning Awards 2018 here at the beautiful Dorchester Hotel in London. And can I just say what a very glamorous crowd you are, not just the ladies. Claudia did tell me, she told me you're a very stylish bunch, actually. The National TV Awards has got nothing on you guys. Um, of course, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate the quality and the excellence and, of course, the outstanding achievements of all of the finalists in this room tonight. And as you've just heard from Ed, the Institute has received yet another record number of entries for this year's awards. So the fact that you are here with us tonight in this room is an incredible achievement in itself. So well done, you. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause. And looking at some of the nervous faces in the room, I can tell just how much winning one of these awards tonight would mean. It's very prestigious. And as somebody who's had to acquire a few new skills, actually, at several points along the way in my own career, I can appreciate what focused advice and what training can offer. So firstly, congratulations to you all. With all this talent tonight, promises to be the best learning awards yet, even better than last year's when Claudia hosted. <laughs> Sorry, Claude, she knows I love her. So on behalf of all the judges and everyone at the Institute, we wish you all the very best of luck. Good luck. Now, before we officially start the awards ceremony, we would like to thank all of those who've generous, generously supported the Learning Awards with both their time and their resources. So firstly, can we offer a big thank you to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT, our headline sponsor. They're here on table one, I believe. Thank you very much to you. And of course, thank you so much to all the individual sponsors whose support allows us to put on such a fabulous evening. Also, let's give a huge round of applause to our panel of independent judges who've given up their time viewing countless presentations. So special thanks must go to the judging chairs, of course. So please show your appreciation, if you would, for Nigel Payne, <laughs> Charles Jennings, Barbara Thompson, Simon Gibson, Kathy Hoy, Miles Runham, and Sue Bradshaw. Thank you, judges. Now, I'll just explain quickly how this is all going to work. I will introduce each category and invite the award sponsor on the stage to reveal the winners. Those who are gold award winners should make their way to the stage, collect the Learning Awards version of the Glitter Ball Trophy. It's very special. And, and all silver and bronze winners and the other finalists will be able to pick up their trophy um, from the Opal Room, which is back through the Champagne reception area, straight after the ceremony. OK, so it's the moment of truth. Let the Learning Awards 2018 begin. <laughs> oh, this is a fun part. Edge of your seat stuff. The first award tonight is for the People Development Programme of the Year for those organisations in the public sector. Now, this award is sponsored by the Working Manager and the finalists are Leo Learning, Medical Research Council, Royal National Lifeboat Institution, and to make the, ins the presentation, please welcome to the stage the Working Manager CEO, Mr. Philip Perver. Welcome, Philip. Thank you, Tess. Good evening, everybody, and um, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to present this first award this evening. And I'm also delighted to say that the winner of the People Development Programme of the Year Public Sector Award is the Royal National Lifeboat Association. Yeah. 
With a business built on volunteers, effective use of individuals' time is crucial. So reducing classroom training time was paramount. The RNLI solution was to develop a fully immersive online program which enables volunteers to learn at their own pace at their own time. With the positive endorsements from users, the outstanding quality of the M product, and the passion and enthusiasm demonstrated during the presentation, the RNLI truly deserve this award. Well done, RNLI. Thank you all very much, and I got three kisses. Lovely. Okay, the next award is the People Development Programme of the Year for organisations within the private sector. Now, this category is sponsored by Teach on Mars, and the finalists are Abby V, Glaxo Smith Klein, Hugo Boss Textile, Manpower Group, Walsley Insights Learning Development, and Odyssey. And please welcome to the stage to tell us who's won, Emmanuel Rimi, Head of International Operations at Teach on Mars. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Christelle. Good evening, everyone. Uh, bronze Award goes to ABV. Silver Award goes to Manpower Group. And the winner of the People Development Programme of the Year Private Sector is Wolseley Insight Learning and Development and Odyssey. The judges were impressed with this highly robust solution from Wolseley Insights Learning and Development and Odyssey. The solution demonstrated a strong return on investment all the way from the earlier stages. In the evidence, there was a passionate and brave can-do attitude and strong cultural insight, which resulted in the team being able to successfully convince the leadership and the executive board that this was the best way to build organisational capabilities and adjust behaviours. A richly deserved winner. Deserved. Indeed, thank you very much. The next award is for the Apprenticeship Programme of the Year, sponsored by Comtia. And the finalists are Centrica, Guys and St. Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust, St. Mungo's, Tom Vehicle Rental. To present the award, please welcome Comtia's Vice President of Europe and the Middle East. It's Graham Hunter. Good evening, uh, everybody. It's uh, fantastic to see everybody once again. I'm still getting over the calendar, but uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, as Comteer uh, Vice President to award the um, uh, winner of the Apprenticeship Programme of the Year. So uh, the Silver Award goes to Centrica. Uh, and the winner of the Apprenticeship Programme of the Year Award is St Mungo's. St Mungo's is a homeless charity that helps rebuild lives. One of the unique aspects of the apprenticeship programme is that it's exclusively for people with lived experience. It helps those with challenging backgrounds gain experience, qualifications and employment with St Mungo's or other companies in the homelessness sector. The programme is life-changing for apprentices, making St Mungo's a worthy winner of award. Congratulations, St Mungo's. Those ladies are doing wonderful work. That's a brilliant charity. 
Uh, we move on now to an award that is presented to an organisation that's built an exemplary and effective onboarding programme. This award is sponsored by Litmus Heroes. The fun yeah. Yes, they're starting the dancing later. Thank you very much. <laughs> the finalists for the onboarding programme of the year are At Home Decor Stores and Axonify, Clarice's General Insurance, Abvi, GlaxoSmithKline, and Greater Anglia. And to announce the winner, please welcome from Litmus Heroes, <laughs> Managing, Dire <laughs> Managing Director Tom Moore, and the best job title I've ever heard in my life, Customer Delight Manager, <laughs> Danielle Kennedy. Come on. All right, hello everyone. I will try not to make this uh, too much like the Oscars and get the card wrong. Thanks, uh, Dane, uh, Tess there. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so, the Bronze Award uh, for Onboarding Programme of the Year Award goes to GlaxoSmithKline. The Silver Award goes to Abvi. And... I'll do the honours for the gold. And the winner of the Onboarding Programme of the Year Award goes to... Great Anglia. The judges love the innovative approach that captures the essence of a good onboarding program. They particularly like the fact that the process began before the individual joins the company and continues from day one on the job. The panel was impressed by a customised gift box that is given to every new member of staff at the beginning of the day one face-to-face -face induction, full of useful and practical items, together with some whimsy and tongue-in-cheek objects that uniquely reflect the Great Anglia culture. Congratulations, Greater Anglia! Ah, oh, customer delight manager. Is it as good as it sounds, Danielle? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Details later. Right then, we now move on to the award for Chief Learning Officer of the Year, sponsored by Safety Media. Now, we present this award to an outstanding learning leader who's made a real difference both in learning and performance within their organization. And the finalists are Juliet Denny, Growth Engineering, Kavita Kurup, Access Bank, Sridhar Sarathi, Tata Capital. And to announce the winner of the award, please welcome to the stage Managing Director of Safety Media, it's Toby Roberts. Come on, Toby. Good evening. There is only one winner this evening. Um, so the CLO of the Year Award goes to Kravita Karup. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kravita can't make it here this evening, so um, we will give this award to, we'll the, welcome the Chair of the Judges, Charles Jennings, to receive it for her. The judges had no hesitation in awarding Kavita Karup the title of CLO of the Year. They were impressed by her strong presentation and engaging commitment to learning in her organisation. In spite of presenting via Skype from Mumbai, she was able to convince the panel that learning is very important for Axis Bank and is strongly aligned to business purpose and strategy. With a small learning team in a large organisation, she has demonstrated that learning counts and learning makes a coherent and enduring impact on performance. Congratulations, Kavita. Oh, lovely. We move on now to a new category, and this is Rising Star of the Year Award. It's a big one, sponsored by Filtered. 
Now, we're presenting this award to an individual who's been working in learning and development for less than five years, but has shown exceptional promise and made an impact on their organization. And the finalists are Laura Empson from Cambridge Assessment. Danielle Kennedy, it's you again. <laughs> from Litmus Heroes. <laughs> Hayley Khan from Virtual College. And Suki Sangira from Berwyn Leighton Paisner. Sorry, we've got Emma Sefton from HT2 Labs. Thank you very much. I want to say H2 for some reason. James Tyas from Saffron Interactive. They are our finalists, but who is our winner? To announce the winner of this award, please welcome CEO of Filtered, Mark Zell Sanders. I let the Zell bit. Hiya, good evening. Nice to be here and be supporting this new award. Uh, the bronze award goes to Suki Sangera, Bowen Leighton Paisner. For the The Silver Award goes to Hayley Khan, Virtual College. And the winner of the Rising Star of the Year Award goes to Danielle Kennedy. Danielle is a breath of fresh air and has a can-do attitude. She has a strong moral compass and is very inclusive in her approach. Danielle set up and led a learning innovation function. She created a training academy, ran apprenticeship schemes, and was responsible for both soft and technical skills. Latterly, as customer delight manager, she turned around ailing satisfaction and retention rates for customers. Well done, Danielle. I was going to say celebrate, Danielle, but that's just a silly thing. They're already celebrated over there. <laughs> Litmus Heroes, yes. Customer delight manager. It's a way forward. Uh, up next is an award that has received double the amount of entries from last year. It is the Internal Learning Solution of the Year, sponsored by QA. <laughs> Do you want to know the finalists? Good. They are BT, Bullet Lift Services, AbV, DPD, McCann World Group, and Virgin Active. Please welcome to the stage to tell us who's your winner, QA's director, Mr. Giles Smith. Hello, Giles. Good evening, good evening. Um, I'd say it's quite an honor. I, I never expected to follow Marco, AKA Miley Cyrus, and be on a stage with Tess at the same time. So thank you very much. First here, we just say thank you to Ed and the LPI team for putting on what is always a wonderful event. QA are really proud to be here, and I also say we're really proud to support the Dreamflight charity as well. What a fantastic charity. On to the important thing, of course, who are the winners. Uh, the Bronze Award goes to McCann World Group. The Silver Award goes to DPD. And the winners of the Internal Learning Solution of the Year go to... Best I could do for a drum roll, BT. BT's Fit to Innovate solution presented as a well thought out campaign approach. The solution has been clearly aligned to business strategy and focused on culture change to drive innovation throughout the organization. Self-directed learning and using the workplace as a vehicle for development are at the heart of the initiative. Congratulations, BT. We move on now to the award for External Learning Solution of the Year, sponsored by Training Zone. And your finalists are AXA and Sponge UK. 
Beyond Blue and Liquid Interactive, Booking.com and Good Practice, Great Western Railway and MTD Training, McDonald's and Calidus, PepsiCo and Trinity Marketing. So please welcome to the stage to announce your winner, Commercial Manager of Training Zone, it's Duncan Ledger. Thank you, Duncan. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to everybody. The Bronze Award goes to Great Western Railway and MTD Training. The Silver Award goes to AXA and Sponge UK. And the winner of the External Learning Solution of the Year Award is PepsiCo and Trinity Marketing. Trinity developed a multifaceted behaviour change program that was inspired by PepsiCo's high energy and competitive culture. The sophistication of the business simulation game was notable. It's fun, but more importantly, is set out to push employees intellectually with relatable tasks and challenges. What impressed the judges was the solid define and discovery approaches deployed to get to the root cause from engaging with the impacted audience to teams who drive the spending habits and external media buyers. Superb work, PepsiCo and Trinity Marketing. Every time our photographer does this, I think he means stop, do another move. But you mean we're done. Thank you. Just wanted to clear that up. Uh, right, we move on now to the Learning Technologies Award, sponsored by Microsoft. Now, this award is presented to an organization that has carried out a learning project using one or more learning technologies, demonstrating high quality and innovation. And the finalists are BP, Ernst & Young, Mindful Education, Open Learn at the Open University, and Serious Games International. Oh, and let's not forget Sky Academy. To announce the winner, please welcome Microsoft Area Sales Manager for UK and Western Europe. It's Greg Pearson. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the bronze award goes to BP. Silver award goes to Serious Games International. And the winner of Learning Technologies Award is Sky Academy. Sky Academy impressed the judges with its large-scale, cutting-edge, immersive digital broadcast solution aimed at young people interested in jobs in the digital media world. Sky has delivered a deeply engaging and immersive experience for participants that not only stretches them, but also builds confidence in communication and other core skills. The role-based experiential learning solution is clearly world-class. Well done, Sky Academy! Oh, we're rolling now. The next award is the Innovation in Learning Award, which is sponsored by Serious Games International. Now, this award is for an organization that can demonstrate that they have made a unique and an innovative contribution to the delivery of learning. And the finalists are Johnson Controls, Connect 365 Learning, 
London Business School, MWR in both security, Sayona Tech, and Warwick Conferences. To present the award, please welcome the Operations Director of Serious Games International, it's Andrew King. Serious Games. Who else has done dry January? <laughs> Who gave up today? <laughs> so, the Bronze Award, Siona Tech. <laughs> Silver Award, Johnson Controls. <laughs> and the winner, Innovation and Learning Award, MWR Info Security. <laughs> The judges unanimously decided that the gold award should go to MWR InfoSecurity for their boot camp called HackFu. It is learning by doing and a fully immersive five-day experience for over 100 participants that sets the company apart from its competitors. The HackFu sums up the spirit and commitment of the company. It is thoroughly initiative, it's thoroughly innovative and a thoroughly deserved winner. Congratulations, MWR Info Security. Up next is the Digital Learning Transformation Award, sponsored by New Horizons. Now, we present this award to an organization that has transformed its delivery products or its services by using digital learning tools. And the finalists are Classera, AstraZeneca, and HT2 Labs, Manabel Global Education Services, Mitchells and Butlers, PepsiCo, Kilio and Domino, Tata Consultancy Services. And to make the presentation, would you please welcome now to the stage the Vice President of International Franchise Operations at New Horizons. It's Mike Smith. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great time. All right, New Horizons, we're very proud to be sponsoring this award. And the bronze award goes to Classera. The silver award goes to Manipal Global Education Services. And the winner is of the Digital Learning Transformation Award is Mitchells and Butlers. This digital transformation story impressed the judges the most. It showcased how L&D delivered better learning experiences, crucially using mostly mobile technology. The judges were impressed by the creativity of the campaign and the lasting impact it has had on creating and supporting M&B's performance culture. This, together with the clear energy, commitment and enthusiasm of the team, made for a standout submission and a well-deserved winner. Well done, Mitchells and Butlers! Oh, I love that song. Is anybody ready for the dancing afterwards, by the way? What? That's a bit of a mediocre reaction. Thank you, uh, the team over there, led by Danielle. Uh, up next is the award for Startup Learning Provider of the Year, sponsored by Woodrow Mercer. 
This award is presented to an organization that is under three years old and has made a significant impact on the sector. And the finalists are EduMe, Mindful Education, New Heroes, Popcorn, The Mentoring School, and Zipboard. To make this presentation, please welcome to the stage from Woodrow Mercer Learning, Business Manager, Scott Slade, and Consultant, Stephen Broadley. Good evening. Thank you, Tess. The Brond Award goes to Popcorn. The Silver Award goes to Edumi. And the winner of the Startup Learning Provider of the Year goes to Mindful Education. Mindful Education identified a need in the FE market for flexible and user-friendly courses that suit the needs of tutors and learners. They developed an innovative funding approach that removes financial risk and gives long-term ROI to colleges and mindful education. Working with experts in the relevant fields of education, they have developed blended programs with impressive completion rates and exam results. We see a strong future for this company and for the learners they provide for. Congratulations, Mindful Education! Full education. Brilliant. Right, we now come to the Learning Professional of the Year Award, sponsored by Training Journal. Now, this award is presented to an individual who's shown exceptional skills in learning and development. And the finalists are Joe Byrne, Cambridge Assessment, Bobby Chatterjee, Inspirational Development Group, Sharon Kalafi Kiliubi, State Street Global Advisors, and Craig Hamill, Zonal Retail Data Systems. Not forgetting John Hinchcliffe, Virtual College, and Craig Taylor of HT2 Labs. To make the announcement, please welcome editor of Training Journal, it's John Kennard. Welcome, John. Thanks, Tess. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. The Bronze Award for Learning Profession of the Year goes to John Hinchcliffe from Virtual College. The Silver Award for Learning Profession of the Year goes to Joe Byrne from Cambridge Assessment. But the winner of the Learning Profession of the Year Award is Sharon Claffey Kalobi. Regularly sharing learning with others through whatever means possible, Sharon's passion for learning makes her a true learning and development role model. Sharon's desire and determination towards actively promoting women in learning and leadership is an inspiration and further demonstrates her awareness of the environment she currently works within and commitment to a more diverse future. Well done, Sharon. Well done, Sharon. We come now to one of the most popular categories in which we see a record number of entries every year. It is the Learning Team of the Year Award, sponsored by TTS, and the finalists are Cognizant Technology Solutions, EY, eh? Robert Bosch, Abby V, Specsavers, and State Street Global Advisors. 
Please welcome to the stage to present the award, Managing Director of TTS, it's Herman Oud. 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 Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to again present the Learning Team of the Year Award. Um, and uh, I think it's a very, it's, it's, it's a great award because it, all what we do is teamwork. Nothing is one man or one woman alone. Uh, so the Bronze Award uh, goes to Cognizant Technology Solutions. Congratulations for that. <laughs> Silver Award goes to the company with a short name, EY. Congratulations for that. And before I announce the Gold Award winner, I have to adjust my glasses, sorry, because the winner is Specsavers. Congratulations. The judges felt this pitch clearly laid out the business impact. The team have brilliant business insights and connection to what was needed to support the business. There was a clear plan, energy and enthusiasm displayed by Jamie and Daniel. Well done, Specsavers. Well done, Specsavers. Now then, for one of the most anticipated awards of the night, this is the Learning Provider of the Year Award, sponsored by EY. And the finalists are Athena Professional, EF Education First, Eparamus, I hope I said that right, Calidus, Leo Learning, and QA. To open the envelope, please welcome to the stage Learning Design and Solutions Manager at EY, it's Tina Fawcett. <laughs> welcome, Tina. Thank you. So the Bronze Award goes to Leo Learning. The Silver Award goes to Calidus. And the winner of Learning Provider of the Year is EF Education First. EF Education is a company with clear evidence of investing effectively in innovation, including developing new platforms, services and mobile apps, as well as leading edge work in virtual and augmented reality. EF showed the judges how it works with clients to agree KPIs for the learning that makes a real and tangible difference to their business, including solid data to support the business cases. Congratulations, EF, education first. I've just realised why there's an extra frizz on in the air in the room tonight. I've been reminded twice this night. It's the 1st of February, of course. The end of dry January. And you've all come out celebrating that, haven't you? Well done. Now then, to the final award of the night. It is the Colin Corder Award. This is for outstanding services to learning. And this highly prestigious award is sponsored by Pluralsight. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, the Institute is once again pleased to present the award in recognition of Colin Corder, who made an outstanding and lasting contribution to the learning profession. Now, if you just listen to this, because it's really important, thank you so much. 
Because although Colin's life was tragically cut short at an early age, his passion for learning and the positive change that learning can bring impacted the entire industry and still serves as an example for us all today. So to present this much coveted award, please welcome the Chair of Judges, Nigel Payne and Director of Marketing and Customer Experience at Pluralsight, Catherine Stenson. Welcome Thank to the stage. Thank you. Wow, everybody, what an evening. Thank you, LPI. You've done yourself proud and everybody here. Plural Sight for the fourth year in a row are proud sponsors of this much coveted award of the evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Nigel to reveal what we're all waiting to hear. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Catherine. It's the one award with no envelope. And I'll give you two pieces of good news. The first one is it is the last award. And the second piece of really, really good news is the person who is going to be presented with the award is in the room. Yes, that's a massive achievement. And I can tell you that I have not taken my eyes off that person for more than 30 seconds for the whole evening. So I've been following them wherever they've gone, but they're here and I'm delighted. And the winner of our award is better known in the United States than in Europe, but is someone of great note. That person has written four very good and best-selling books on HR and learning and development. In 2015, she was listed as one of the top 50 influencers in corporate human resources. She was awarded one of the most engaging speakers in HR and learning in 2014. And she writes a column for Forbes magazine. She was the recipient of the Distinguished Contribution in Workplace Learning Award by ATD and is the founding partner, and this gives it all away, the founding partner of Future Workplace, which is an HR advisory and research organization. So I'm very pleased, very proud to announce that the winner of the 2018 Colin Corder Award is the very present Jean Meister. Congratulations. Huge congratulations, Jean. What a lady. Great reaction, too. Now then, before you all go off to celebrate, it is time to announce the winner of the Charity Auction Prize, sponsored by Happy. So shall we find out who's won that trip to Rome? Three-night holiday. Sounds good to me. I think someone's got the envelope. Does someone have the all-important envelope to pass to me? Pauline. Thank you, darling. Oh! <gasps> The winner of the three-night luxury trip to Rome is Simon Perizon. Congratulations. Simon, come on up. Come and collect your prize. And can I come with you? Thank you. Lovely. What a lovely little bonus, a trip to Rome. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic evening. You are a brilliant crowd. Let's now show our appreciation, shall we? To Pauline Saunders, events manager at the LPI. Well done, Pauline. She's worked very hard. She's ready to let her. She doesn't want to come on stage, but she just ran on with the envelope. And she's a beautiful lady. Well done, Pauline. Congratulations. It's all gone really well. You can relax now. 
Our award sponsors once again, the distinguished panel of judges, and of course, all of the finalists and award winners tonight. Uh, and finally, to more immediate concerns, the drinking and the dancing is starting now in the champagne reception area. So that officially concludes the 2018 Learning Awards Ceremony. Have a wonderful night, won't you? I know you will, especially you lot over there. Um, have a brilliant night. We look forward to seeing you again next year and celebrate your success tonight. Well done and good night. Thank you very much.